Here's one last example of simple harmonic motion before we transition into something known as damped harmonic motion. So we've already seen the uh, simple mass on a spring and the physical pendulum and the simple pendulum. Here's a compound system that has two cylinders. I guess each individual cylinder has a mass of one half m so that the whole system has a mass of m and then attached at a axle that goes through the middle is this ideal spring with a stiffness of k. Uh, I've reversed our frame of reference so to the left is positive and to the right is negative in this case. So we set this system in motion by pulling the cylinders back to the left and when we release it then it starts to rotate. Now we can imagine the axis rotation as the contact point with the ground. This is definitely a case where mu is not equal to zero. If mu was zero then when you release it the whole system is just going to slide but the idea is this is a system where it rolls as it returns to the equilibrium point and then it overshoots the equilibrium point like all objects do in simple harmonic motion. The friction force when you first release it points to the left. The friction force for a moment is zero when it passes through the equilibrium point and then the friction force points back to the right when it reaches the um, uh, other position after half of the cycle of motion. So let's take a look at the net torque on the system as a way to uh, determine what's the period. In fact, there's two questions I want to ask for this problem. One, what would the period of oscillation be for a system like this? And two, what does a graph of that friction force versus time look like? How can we describe the variation in the force of friction? Take it one step at a time. We'll derive an expression for the period based off of Newton's second law for rotation. So here's our diagram once again. We're going to imagine that the axis of rotation is the point of contact. So the friction force that acts it doesn't produce any torque relative to that axis of rotation. So the only torque producing force is the force from the spring, which would be equal to negative kx. So our net torque is equal to negative kx acting at a lever arm of r. That means I alpha is equal to negative kxr. So we need to substitute uh, something for i and something for alpha. I know it's substitute for alpha. That's d2 theta dt squared. But what's a substitute for i? Well, it's a solid cylinder, right? So you might think i is 1 half mr squared, but that's only about an axis through the center. We need to apply the parallel axis theorem, so i equals i naught plus md squared which means I equals one-half MR squared plus MR squared, or I is three-halves MR squared. There we go. So we can cancel out one of the R's and then cross-multiply. We have D2 theta DT squared is equal to negative... 2k divided by 3m times x over r. If it rolls without slipping, then x is equal to theta r, or in other words, theta is x over r. So here we go. Second derivative of angular position with respect to time is equal to negative 2k over 3m theta. And you know how this goes. What sort of function can I take the second derivative of so that I get back a negative constant times that original function? So what's a good guess in this case? Yeah, we're going to guess that theta is equal to theta maximum cosine omega t. So if that's true, 
the second derivative of theta with respect to time would be equal to negative omega squared theta max cosine omega t. So that's good, because that's theta itself. So if we compare the result from Newton's laws with the result from our guess, then omega squared has to equal 2k over 3m, or omega is the square root of 2k over 3m. That means frequency in hertz would be equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 2k over 3m. And therefore, we've got our final result we're after. The period of oscillation for this system is 2 pi times the square root of 3m over 2k. That's pretty good. Quick review. If we have an object that falls through the center of the Earth, then it has periodic motion with a period equal to 2 pi times the square root of radius cubed over gm. If we have a mass that slides on a frictionless surface, period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. If we have a physical pendulum, maybe we take something like a baseball bat, pull it back some angle relative to vertical and let it swing. Then the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of i over mgr. And if we have just a simple pendulum, a mass at the end of a string, we measure length from the hinge to the center of mass of the pendulum bob. Bob has a mass L, string has a, well, from the top to the center of mass is a length L. In that case, period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. So we've come up with a lot of different expressions for period. If we can come up with an equation for the period of motion, then we're studying periodic motion. These are all cases of periodic motion that happen to correspond to simple harmonic motion. And in any case, uh, our most recent derivation seems to compare favorably with the other expressions that we have. What was our second question of this problem? We have to figure out what does a graph of the friction force versus time look like. Let's copy this image, paste it again. some of this. Clean slate. Okay, so once again, our cylinder is released from this position, overshoots the equilibrium position, and ends up here. The friction force starts out pointing to the left, goes to zero, and ends up pointing to the right. Let's see if that's really true. Net force is equal to, well, let's see. That's the positive direction. That's the negative direction. Kx is pulling in the negative direction, and the friction force is pulling in the positive direction. So the net force is friction force minus kx, or ma is equal to friction minus kx, which means our friction force is equal to ma plus kx. Now if this cylinder rotates, so that theta, the angle that it rotates, let's say it starts out, let's just draw a reference line on here, and say we've got a line connecting the center of mass to the point of contact. Then as time goes by, that line 
starts to rotate, right? As it gets to this position, the line is here. As it gets to this position, the line goes here, and so on, and so on, and so on. So uh, our guess was that theta is equal to theta max cosine omega t. S equals theta r, and S is really the distance it travels along our x-axis. So if theta varies sinusoidally, then so does x. So this x must be equal to some maximum x that we can call the amplitude times cosine omega t. And if that's the case, then acceleration would be the second derivative. It would be negative omega squared a cosine omega t. So we can make substitutions to get to step four. Our friction force would be equal to negative m omega squared a cosine omega t plus ka cosine omega t. But what's omega? Omega was equal to the square root of 2k over 3m. So f is equal to negative m times 2k over 3m times a cosine omega t plus k a cosine omega t. So this m cancels out. So we have f is equal to, let's transpose this, k a cosine omega t minus 2 thirds k a cosine omega t. So the friction force is equal to one-third k a cosine omega t. So we can finally answer the question of what does a graph of friction force versus time look like? It looks like a graph of cosine with a maximum value of one-third k a and a minimum value of negative one-third k a. That represents one full cycle of motion, or the time is one full period, and from there the motion just continues. So that's a pretty neat problem. One more example of simple harmonic motion. Stay tuned. Our next few lessons will get into what happens when there are resistive forces. So we might investigate the mass on the spring, maybe continue to say the friction is zero. However, what if there is a big flag or a big sail that has to push through the wind? That presents a resistive force. Net force is no longer just equal to negative kx. Now there's a force, a drag force, that's equal to negative bv that's presented on the system. How does that change the equation for motion as a function of time? Okay, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.